Here's another old classic then, this is a Krell uh, integrated amplifier here, this is the KAV300i uh, and uh, it powers up okay uh, but the owner's complaining of just kind of random glitches and the like on the output uh, so we'll have a look at that. Uh, before we take the covers off we'll put the scope on it and just monitor that for a while, see what we can see there. Now we've got the we've got the scope connected up then and uh, I've had it sitting for quite some time here, I can turn up the volume here a test signal going in and I've just got the outputs in antiphase there so we can see uh, and it's functioning okay and it seems to it seems to be sitting quite stable there uh, of course I'm only checking the unbalanced inputs here we've not got a, we've not got a balanced signal at the moment so there could still be a problem there um, but the owner wants this uh, serviced and recapped anyway so we'll we'll get get the covers off we'll start to do that and then uh, we'll see how we go from there Let's see what we've got uh, going on inside here then. And uh, you can see this one's been sitting for a while, so a wee bit dusty inside. Uh, but a nice clean layout. Uh, minimal wiring going on in here. Uh, and this is our input board, input selection, preamp kind of board, and then obviously the power amp on the bottom there. Uh, and we can see, actually, we can see around that capacitor there, you know, there's a kind of some sort of residue there, looks like that guy's been leaking. Um, I can see there's some gunk there as well, so maybe like something spilled in there. Um, but we'll take this outside, we'll clean it up, and then we'll, the first job is we'll take that board out, replace these four caps, and then see see what we've got on the underside here, see what we need to do there. Alright, so we're giving things a bit of a, a dust down, and uh, I've got the screws off the back to let me get this board out. There's a bunch of screws at the back where the connectors are and then we've got four screws here and this ribbon cable comes off and uh, let's just get that out. Uh, so what else have we got here? We can now, oh, right, so we've got these uh, very long uh, headers here that are joining us to the main board. They might be fun to get back in. Got another capacitor on the bottom side here. Uh, so we'll clean that up. We'll, we'll get these electrolytics out. We'll measure them, just see what state they're in. But I'm expecting them to be pretty rough and we'll replace them anyway. Uh, and then we can have a deeper look at the main board here. I can already see some things that uh, are obviously in need of attention. Uh, we'll shift the camera and have a little look at that. These amps are apparently notorious for uh, a dry capacitors. I, I, don't, I mean, I suppose anything this age is going to be suspect anyway. We can see the dates on some of the boards here in 1995, so we're the best part of 30 years old. But this was, a, when I turned the covers off, this was the first cap I spotted here. We can see that the it's kind of domed in the top there. Uh, maybe it doesn't come over, over overly well on the camera, but if I put a ruler on there we can see uh, very clearly domed compared to its neighbour there with a flat top. So that guy's in trouble. And then usually, you know, usually the main reservoir capacitors uh, in the amps are, are okay. Um, but here again, I can see this guy here, a nice uh, flat. But here we've got uh, a clear doming on that. And the same in the other channel. Uh, quite a pronounced dome on that guy compared to its neighbour. So these are all, I mean, they're all going to get replaced, really. We'll measure them, we'll see how they look, but uh, that's the that's the first observations. And then when we look deeper inside, we've got a bunch of capacitors here. Here's six capacitors around these, I guess these are regulators. Uh, and we can see the discoloration on these guys here. So they're clearly uh, had a hard time in terms of temperature, and these will these will be dry for sure. Uh, and then when I look at these resistors here, I think this, these are maybe Zener diodes here and we've got a series resistor and if I zoom in on them we can see they've, looks like they've had a hard life as well. There we are zoomed in on these resistors and we can see looks like the outer coating there is just uh, coming away. I mean they're probably okay, they're, they're obviously uh, uh, rated for a decent power but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll deal with them, we'll smarten them up. Right so we're looking to get this main board out now and we've had a bunch of screws bolting the heat sink down and then another couple of couple of screws and bolts uh, holding the main board down. Uh, so we're loose now and we should be able to just lift this out of the way. Quite a large single board. 
Uh, oh yeah, a bunch of stuff in the back there. You can see our, uh, there's our uh, bridge rectifiers. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a nice detail that actually they've got that bolted to the chassis. Uh, we've got some electrolytics on here, on under here as well. Unfortunately, they'll be they'll be getting uh, kind of warm in there. And these are obviously our drivers for the main transistors. Uh, so nice enough. You can see we've got a bit of bit of heat damage around this area. That's where those capacitors were. Uh, a, uh, kind of scorched. We can see the dates there, 1995, as I mentioned before, Krell Industries. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll get rid of the main chassis, uh, start to disassemble the caps off this, and uh, let's see how that goes. Right, so I've got all the caps out of this uh, uh, preamp board uh, and replaced them already, actually, because these are, these are kind of fairly standard values that I had here. Um, and so measuring them, they're, they're they're not great, but they're not, uh, you know, they're not a complete disaster. Other than there was one of them there where we could see there was some leakage, and uh, that's this guy here that's got some, uh, it's you know beginning to burst out the bottom there. So this guy is completely dud. If we measure that, uh, it's it's nothing. It's just not there. So. Uh, We'll move on to the main board now, and these are there's some there's some kind of uh, values here that I don't have don't have available. So we'll get a wee shopping list here. We'll get these ordered and uh, get on with that board. All right, sometime later then, and this uh, our board's all full of shiny new capacitors here, and a lot of these were dry when I measured them. You can see even here, you know, the electrolyte's clearly been uh, leaking out the bottom of this guy. Uh, and the ESR, a lot of them were, were uh, pretty poor. Uh, this area here um, is a kind of capacitor multiplier power supply, so it's just a quiet power supply. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're relying on the capacitors doing their, their job in there, and they were completely gone. These resistors that we showed had, you know, some signs of wear on them or some signs of heat damage anyway. Uh, I've replaced them with some beefier parts, that was the original ones there and we've got these big guys in here and I've uh, lifted them up off the board a bit just to get a bit of air under them and around them uh, etc. Um, so that's us really, we'll uh, um, start to assemble this uh, back into the, the main chassis and then uh, maybe look to make some measurements on this thing. So we've got everything, everything back in place and everything's screwed back in and we've had the front panel off as well, there's there's a five capacitors in there that were changed uh, just when we're in here. Um, so we're ready to put some power on this thing now and we've actually got the uh, service manual. Uh, this is all online here so there's some uh, there's some procedure here. It's not, you know, there's not an incredible amount of detail here, but it gives us this kind of DC offsets and uh, the uh, the bias and things that we need to set. And we've got a wee bit of a procedure to follow here. Uh, gives us the specs as well, um, so we'll be able to check them at the end. Uh, so we'll get some power on it. We'll uh, check the bias, check the offsets, and then we'll maybe get it connected to the audio analyzer and uh, see what uh, that tells us. Right, so the unit's all powered up um, and uh, everything seems to be working fine. Um, we're just measuring the bias here and it's telling me we're looking for 12 millivolts and uh, reading about 17 here, so it's reading a little bit high. Uh, when I remove the top cover, the bias drops a little bit, but it's still, still too high. So we'll go in and uh, adjust that. Let's just get the top cover to the side. Uh, and then we're looking at the left, you can see the voltage drop in there as we, as we take the cover off. Um, and then we've got this variable resistor in here that we can get our screwdriver in. So we'll drop that down to... somewhere about the... maybe about 11 and a half say. And then when we put the covers back on, I mean, there's one thing that's unclear in this procedure here. It doesn't it doesn't say if the adjustment is with the you, you, you know if that uh, 12 millivolts is with the covers on or off. Um, so we're just applying our judgment here. Uh, so we'll let that settle and see how we go. 
So we're set on there just a little bit above the 12 millivolts. Um, so we'll leave it at that, that's uh, good enough. Uh, the next thing is to look at the DC offset. And I should mention, we've got the, there's three test points here, and three on the other side. This is what we're adjust, uh, 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 clipping onto to make these measurements. So if we move uh, this guy here over, then we should now be looking at our output offset. And uh, we've got about 8 millivolts there, we're looking for zero. And uh, we've got an adjustment in here. That's good enough, zero plus or minus a few hundred microvolts uh, and it's telling us telling us in the spec here it wants to be within 20 millivolts so we're well within that. Uh, so I'll let that set, I'll do the same in the other channel and then we'll uh, look to connect up to the audio analyzer and uh, look in a, little more, a bit more detail about how this thing's performing. Right, connected to audio analyzer then I'm just looking at the, the noise floor here uh, and if I put some averaging on, uh, it, uh, what we see here is we've got a floor that's maybe about minus 120, you know, and, and with some of the Cyrus stuff we're looking at, uh, you maybe expect a floor about 110 or just below 110. So we can see all this uh, extra junk going on here, but I suspect we're seeing it because the noise floor actually is actually lower. Um, although this, you know, it's maybe not overly desirable, this stuff here, but it uh, seems to be within spec in terms of the sort of noise floor uh, uh, spec that we're asking for here. Uh, let's say uh, go and look at the distortion then. Right, so looking looking at distortion then, and uh, I've changed my scale here on the left here. We're looking at power in watts, uh, and I've got my percentage there on the right hand side showing our distortion. So if we quickly turn our uh, signal on, this is 120 watts and we're reading 0.05% uh, there on the distortion, which is well within spec. The spec is uh, less than 0.1, so we're quite happy at that. And then if we just quickly flip to looking at the gain, I've got the volume up at maximum here and it tells me the gain should be 358 uh, So let's just look at that, 358 so we're in good shape there. The spectrum, I mean, this is 100, 120 watts out, so we've got a bit of junk in the spectrum, but uh, well within spec and uh, looking good there. So we'll uh, go and do the other channel. We'll just make sure everything's fine there, and then we're kind of wrapping up here. We'll have a quick listen, and uh, that'll be us. So here's our Krell uh, 300i, uh, after we've done all our service there and tweaking it up, etc. And, uh, and very nicely laid out amplifier for its age. You know, a lot of these amplifiers, 30 years old, were uh, a right uh, arrangement inside. You know, this was a very logically laid out thing and uh, quite nice to work on, uh, quite logical. Uh, it does run quite hot, and so, you know, that kind of explains why uh, it's got a reputation for dry capacitors, etc. But we're all done now, and I've, I've been listening to it. Very nice sounding amplifier. Uh, and uh, let's just have a listen.